This podcast is brought to you by the True Word Brand. Follow us on all platforms at Popping Up Podcast Chicago. And we are virtually. Black old my boy. What's up, my boy? <laughs> Yo, it took me way too long to figure out how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering, like, oh, man, what's going on when I'm here? The, the, the first thing you did was decline it. I'm like, yeah. man. Nah, it was like rotate your phone. I'm over here turning my phone in circles. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, my boy? How you feeling? Oh, I'm pretty good. How you doing? I'm all right, man. Hey, look, it's one it's one of them shows, man. We ain't in the studio tonight, but you know how we get down. Yeah, that's what's up. Um, um, I'm sad I didn't get to come to the studio live when I was in the city. Don't worry about it. You said you're coming back, though, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. This year. Oh, yeah, man. We got popping up podcasts in the building one time. You know, I'm from out west now. Here you go. Here you go. You from out west, two ninety. You from out west now, two ninety. Hey y'all, yep. he came to Chicago and don't know how to act. He think he for two ninety now. <laughs> I'm outside with it. Yeah, I'll be on that E-way all the time now. You came to Chicago, don't know how to act, man. Hey man, tell hey man. So for real though, how you how you like the city though when you came? Man, I love Chicago. I mean, I used to come all the time when I was a kid, but it was my first time as an adult, and that was different. <laughs> you know, I was with it. Picking up drinks at one thirty in the morning, ice cup drinks. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Shout out to Niski, man. She I hope she watching, man. Shout out to Niski. That was the Niski drink that you had, right? Yeah. Oh it was yeah. Shout, hey, out to shout out to Niski. That was good. No, but I love the city, man. It's it's a beautiful city. It's definitely like the the, the talking points on TV is definitely wrong. You know, you gonna find trouble if you're looking for it anyway. But the city is fire. Oh man, there she go. Listen, I was building. struggling just like that. <laughs> I was like, I'm here, though, but I'm She's here. She's in the building. She's in the building. She came nah. through the I'm here. It took me a minute. <laughs> I know, right? What's going on with y'all? How y'all feeling tonight? We good. good. I mean, we turned 30 and forgot how to use technology and shit. That's all. I know, man. <laughs> we look like Nelly and Lil Wayne right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those, man. Hey, so, so Lima, man, tell them people who you is, man. What's going on? I'm, I'm excited to have you. Uh, hey guys, uh, my name is Lima. I own Touch Therapeutic Massage and Body Work. Uh, originally from Buffalo, New York. I'm out here in Dallas, Texas. I know we're yeah. shy, but you know, everybody tapped in from everywhere. You never know when you visit in Dallas. And you need a good <laughs> massage. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I ain't tried one out. I ain't tried one out yet. But once I get back down there, I will. I used to look out. Listen, look. You, once you come to me, you ain't going back to nobody else. You like, nah, that ain't nope. even a massage. I don't even know what that is. I already heard about it. You know, Thaddeus put it in the atmosphere already. I already heard about it, so I'm already excited for it. Nah, she go there for sure. Oh man, she came through with the with the uh, with the uh, touch merch and everything, man. You feel me? She got hey, some yeah. <laughs> hey, she got the oh, popping up part. She she got the uh, Thad got the uh, the pop up comfort. You know, pop up comfort. Right. You know? Hey, I got the true line right here. The true Listen, wine. I, I'm waiting for my bottle. Don't worry about it. I'm a wine drinker, too. Matter of fact, you got to send me your P.O. box so we can send it to you. Okay. Oh, yeah. I ain't got a P.O. box. I mean, I got a regular old address. So I hey, that to you. <laughs> hey, you know what? Hey, you know what? I I'm not sending box. I already sent that is a, a few bottles to uh, send out. So make sure you give her one, okay? Yeah, I got you. So that's how we'll do that. He already got like five bottles coming. Hey, but I'm okay. just shooting my shot. Can we drink it together? Nah, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Kobe. <laughs> Damn. Hey, like Kobe, you feel me? Like Kobe, <laughs> hey, it's the best way to do it. You feel me? But no, man, I'm excited to have y'all tonight. It's so much going on. I'm glad Thanks y'all for having me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate decided, it. Decided to stop through. One day I'm gonna get both of y'all in the studio. I might fly y'all in here myself. But one day I'm gonna get both of y'all in the studio. I'm gonna come through. It gotta be the summertime though. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm with it, but in the summertime. That's hey, cool. I wear my flip flops year round, so I come whenever. I know, man. You you and these damn flip flops, man. It's it's a different story, for real, man. <laughs> so yeah, man. Hey, hey, Thaddeus, we gonna, Thaddeus, we gonna start with you real quick. Tell these people okay. how how many of you met and stuff like that. Oh uh, yeah, so man, I'm actually real dad, man. What? Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, that's the homie, man. We met like almost five years ago um, when I moved back to Dallas. We lived in the same complex. And um, I instantly knew Buddy was on some some real stuff when we chopped it up. So pretty much since that day, we've been linked. And um, I kept telling him, like, bro, I'm about to quit my gig and start this company. <laughs> He's like, I don't know about that, bro. Your gig pretty easy. Um, but Facts. 
But um, I didn't know he had a job for the longest. I just met for two years. I didn't know that name had a job. I said, <laughs> "How are we doing all this stuff for the community with no job?" Yo, hey, Yo, look, like really Robin Hood out here. Hey, one day, one day, Lima was like, he was "Always at the crib." <laughs> hey, you gotta work from the crib, bro. Like, you gotta figure it out. Figure it out. I didn't even know you could have a job at the crib until I seen you one day with the headphones on. Like, what? What's going on over there? <laughs> hey, and then I put them on hold to make a sandwich. <laughs> no, but yeah, man. So from there, we pretty much was linked up all the time, making plays around the city, like positive vibes. I'm showing Brody the city. One time I took him to like the fancy neighborhood. This is how I knew he was from Chicago, though. I took him to, <laughs> I took him to a fancy neighborhood. We were we riding around just looking at the houses, and Brody was like, "Bro, this shit look boring." <laughs> <laughs> hey, I did say that. I did say that though. <laughs> I'm like, but yeah, we want to get boring now, don't we? But yeah, so probably like a year after we met, I started Pop Up Comfort, and was going hard ever since. Pretty much like going out damn near like three times a week, just getting it done, and shit. From there, it just like grew, and yeah, it just kept going. And you know, once once it starts going, you can't put it back in the box. And you know, you got to keep coming with fresh ideas. Because I mean, I named it Pop Up Comfort, so I didn't put it be put in the box. Yeah. Um, I wanted to provide comfort in many situations rather than like dealing with the homeless all the time or like helping moms or dads that's single in the family or whatever. Like I wanted to do stuff seasonal. Like if I wanted to switch it up tomorrow, I ain't want to have name like cancer save lives and then be out there trying to like help somebody <laughs> with with their car notes and stuff because you know um, people don't people don't like when your mission don't line up so i just left it open so i can do whatever i want yeah and, no. um, pretty much since then man we've touched thousands of people in texas alone and we've helped out in over 10 states across the country so yeah man uh, that's that's one of the ways i was in the, I, I end up uh meeting lima at one of y'all events like what was about a year ago at the uh at the gala yeah, hey, it's the gala, but yo, you right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hold on, man. Look. Yo, you got no oh. chill with that. I let him make it. <laughs> hey, look. Hey, look. Hey, look. We from out west. Too late. You already know how we go with that. Hey, yeah, we out west with it. But no, yeah, uh, man, me and Lima met like shit three, four years ago. And as soon as she started there, when they started the um, massage company, they started helping out right away. Like, mm -hmm. My first school ever was with with um Lima and them getting massages done. So they've been on that journey for like three years, and shit is never no. It's always like let's figure it out if I reach I like out. That. So I, that's I, I like that. Shit. I like that. I like that. I like. That. I like that. Yeah. So Lima, man, tell us. Uh, I know. I know. Uh, we bumped heads a few at the gala, but mm -hmm. I didn't really get to chime in on you like I really wanted to. But tell us. Tell the people. You know what I'm saying? What got you started and motivated and. Um, honestly, a massage is something that kind of fell into my lap. Getting, I'm originally from New York, so when I moved to Dallas, I'm going to give you my story, basically. So I moved to oh, Dallas. No. Um, I didn't have a job. So I literally packed up my car and I drove here. And then when I got here, my apartment was infested with roaches. Well, honestly, that's to be determined. I don't know what it was infested with, but it was insects <laughs> coming out the vents. And I oh, drained, man. and I ain't about this life. I said, nah, I need y'all to give me my money back. I had to get real New York on them. And I know they don't write checks at a, a leasing offices, but they wrote me a check. They said, here you go, your money back, ma'am. I said, y'all not living here. <laughs> no, but they don't that, do that. With that being said, I was homeless and jobless in Texas for about a week. Oh, um, wow. And I quickly realized that they don't really lease the people if you don't have a job. And I was like, damn. All right. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> like, all right. Uh, well. So what I had to do, I really had to, I got room New York all over again. I said, listen, here, little lady, I went to, I did a tour. I liked the place. I said, listen, I need your manager. She was like, why? I said, I need this apartment and I need it tomorrow. And she's like, okay, but well, I said, no, but I need your manager. She's like, yeah, I said, I don't have a job, but I got money. <laughs> I said, I can give you a six months rent right now. I do a six month lease. I pay a deposit, whatever you need me to do. I said, but I need to move in tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, she actually let me move in. She just sent me to see her bank statements. I show her my money I had, and she's like, oh, no, we man. can move in, no deposit, blah, blah, blah. Damn, that's a blessing. You got good credit. Listen, God was, God was on my side this whole entire time I've been You feel me? <laughs> you feel me? He always coming through one time. You feel me? And period. But anyway, since I didn't have a job, 
I took a vacation for my joblessness because yeah. you know, that was stressful when you ain't working. <laughs> And I, I visited my home girl, and she had a massage plaque on the wall. And I was like, damn, I thought I, I forgot I wanted to do that. You know, like, life, you get caught up in life. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I yeah. can have this, this dream, but, you know, you got a job so you can make ends meet. So I don't have a job right now. And I said, damn, I did want to do that. Let me look into it. Literally two weeks later, I was in massage school. Damn. So how long did it take you? It took me a year to get my yeah, license. Okay. Um. Right after, as soon as I graduated, I started my own business. Um, I, this is my third massage business right here. <laughs> third time's the charm. This is my last one. I ain't doing it again. Man, look, you already, you, hey, you, already, you already you already taking off already. So, you know what I'm saying? You're going to be straight. <laughs> yeah. Here we're going to keep pushing it. So, yeah, hey, hey, so, I heard you got a, um, well, you did, I heard you, well, I ain't hear it, but um, I did a couple of research, but um, not the massage business, but I heard you that, that you did have a, um, a trucking company, right? Or something like that? For me? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I did. Tell us all about that real quick. <laughs> oh, man. This is... My my seven years here was a journey. You hear me? A okay. journey. Um, And it's a wonder I ain't just walk away and just say, like, oh, fuck it all, go back home. Thanks. Um, I'm glad you stayed, though. <laughs> See you I, through. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. So basically what happened was um, it was me. I actually was doing real estate first. So okay. let me take it back. So I am a real estate agent, but was doing like wholesaling and stuff like that, you know, trying to yeah. flip houses. And we was like, yo, and, the, and then one of the guys that was one of our partners, he had a trucking company, but he kind of closed it down. I said, well, how about this? I said, I'm going to buy your trucking company. You're going to work at it. And we're going to use the money from the trucking company to fund our real estate. Not even a month into it, the man literally ripped me off. He literally cleared out the bank account. Um, it took everything me not to call the goons because my homeboy from Chicago, I, don't, I almost called the people on him. <laughs> right. um, and once, once, once that happened, I was like, well, you know what? I, I kind of already know the game now. I said, you know what? I already got the truck. It's in, everything's in my name. I sold him back. Well, no, I signed myself off his company. Uh, signed on with another company and started running my truck. Called my uncle. I said, I need you to run this 18 wheeler for me. I said, I'm going to keep it going. Like, I'm already in it. Let mm -hmm. me begin. Yeah. They didn't work out in my favor, man. <laughs> but I tried. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I tried. I said, I, I, I ended up being like a hundred grand in debt all said and done. Okay. Um, I said, but God, I ain't in debt no more. So, <laughs> and that's, that was only two hey, years look. ago. And I got myself about a hundred grand worth of debt. So that's, that's the wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now I said, to be honest, I will do it again. I said, because now I know what I did wrong. Mm -hmm. I can I can even tell somebody else how to run a trucking company, like and run it superbly because I, I did everything that the wrong way the first time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. but it definitely was an experience. I definitely was stressed out, but I definitely made it through to the other side. So that's all I can say. So so would you ever think about going back or no? I will do it again. I, I don't think I will get an 18 wheeler. I will probably get a dually or a box truck. It's easy to run. It's less insurance. Um, and it's easy to find drivers. Um, they don't really need a CDL in order to do those things. Um, you make roughly the same amount of money, uh, but less overhead. Insurance okay. alone will take you down. Gas alone, but repairing an 18 wheeler. Oh my God. Every time I did a run, I had to take it to the damn shop. I was like, you killing me. <laughs> I'll make 10 grand, spend five grand, and then pay my driver. I said, yo, this shit crazy. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this joint. It's big numbers you make, but it's big numbers that you lose. Yeah. So, so, so what you're saying is, like, if, if you find something like in the transportation world, you'll, you'll probably do it like a couple of miles. I might, yeah. I probably okay. won't do it alone. I would, I will get a partner. Where did everybody go? Okay, they go fast. What? Oh, she went out for a minute. Oh. <laughs> but, well, yeah. Just... Um, go ahead. With that truck and stuff, yeah, that's real. Like, Dallas has been going crazy with that. Um, me and one of my friends actually joined a little venture early this year. Uh, we got a little truck with a trailer or whatever. But the insurance, like she was saying, you got to have that million-dollar policy to get on a DLT board. So all that shit was getting a headache and... Like pop up comfort too busy, 
for me to venture out that far to try to start that kind of company. So I yeah. like faded off that for a minute, but it's definitely lucrative if you can get it right. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. I, what I was gonna say is that it's, it's not a it's not a world for females. Is what I learned. So even when I was doing business with my 18-wheeler, I would say I didn't own the truck. I'd be on the phone like, nah, I don't own it. It's, let me, hold on, hold on, let me get the manager on the line and I'm going to get back with you. Like, that's how, that's how I had to run it. I said, yeah. if I act like I own the business, oh, I'll get short on the stick all the time. They was underpaying me, all yeah. type of stuff. You know what oh, I'm saying? Okay, like, okay. So, that's, so that's how it was when it came to male versus female in that field. Yeah. So That's I needed wild. the male, I we needed the male voice, you know what I'm saying? So I, I didn't have the male voice with me. So I was just like, hold on, I do all his phone calls and I do all his stuff for him. I'm his assistant. And that's how I ran it. <laughs> like, oh, now I don't own this. I don't own it. And they gave me a little bit more respect. They were like, well, call your manager and tell him this. I'm like, all right, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you do when they actually do ask for the male manager? Like, who, like, who they would never you actually on the phone? spoke to him. You know what I'm saying? They were still going <laughs> to talk to me. I'm like, hold, please. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna call him. Hey, you call. Call me back. Right. You call. <laughs> you call. Let, let me put you on a quick hold. <laughs> right. Give me, give me, give me five minutes. I'll call you back. But uh, I ain't calling you back. I'm. Yeah, he not. Yeah. Like, like Lima actually came through clutch. What was it? Thursday last week. Mm -hmm. Um, with the massages at which sunset. Sunset and sunset. Yeah, I seen that. I seen that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I um. I had an accident, bro. Right when I got back from Chicago, I had a car crash and broke. Yeah, you told me about it. Yeah, so I, was, I ain't been driving or nothing. I'm fit, boy. You want to walk? I'm gonna outwalk anybody right now. Like <laughs> I'm so fit. <laughs> but yeah, for real. So after that, especially with them over toes, right, you stay with them over toes. Yeah, with the flip flops, you got some strong cast to walk far with flip flops. Man, hey. Man. For real, because hey, I can't your toenails look like this. Yeah, yeah, like that. <laughs> hey, now nah, they had me wrapped up like a mummy at first. Like, <laughs> look like I had like charm and some women who was like willing to help out in life. <laughs> but hey, yeah, we, hey, we yeah, heard for, coming hey, through hey, last week was super clutch. Uh, for real, I ain't never told you this, but when we like after we started going our separate, not necessarily going our separate ways, but. When I moved into a different complex and you were still there. Oh wait, who left first? I don't know who left first. But I was just telling you, but I remember, I remember those those nights we'd stay up to like three or four in the morning smoking weed. I drink, you wouldn't drink. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you know, so we'd stay up to about three or four in the morning and we'd just talk about how you know what I'm saying, these these moves we're gonna make. And then next thing you know, you know what I'm saying, we doing we doing it. And then you you was actually some of my motivation to some of my moves. You know what I'm saying? So, take that. But yeah, man. Cool. We here for I, it I, I just yeah, remember I them days, we man. We gotta support each other, man. It ain't yep. going in alone, man. We gotta, we for gotta sure. support. You wanna tap into? For real. Yeah, that's for why real. I had to see it through. Like, like around that time, everybody, I was hitting me up, like, bro, I'm about to start a business. Like, you got me motivated. I was like, yeah, I gotta see this through. Like, like little cousins and stuff started businesses and shit. So I was like, <laughs> it's like. Just seeing it happen, people around you. I mean, of course, you got the non believers, they're gonna be there forever. Yeah. But you got those few people watching, like, damn, I can do this now, like, I can follow mm -hmm. my dreams. So, All right, man, because who thought I was gonna do this? What's like, up? We didn't even talk about this, did we? <laughs> What's up? We didn't even the talk about wine? this, did we? Oh, yeah. yeah, we got the true wine coming to Dallas. Well, it came out, it came out of nowhere. We didn't even talk yeah. about that, did we? No, nah, we ain't, we ain't like a lot of the stuff just come, and that's about. Once you start your business, you grow. Like, you like know, you, said, you know the crazy part. Yeah, you know the crazy part. Yeah, I've been doing clothes and all that good stuff and everything yeah. else I've been doing. The, you know the transportation company with the kids, all that good stuff. But when it came to this wine, um, people was always telling me like, "Man, you always got somebody else drinking your hand. Why don't you make your own drink?" I said, well, "I don't want to be no bartender or nothing like that." They was like, "Well, do something." So I'm like, "All right." I, I so I sat on it for about two weeks because people, you know what I'm saying. So then my bro you gave me an idea. You move fast two weeks, that's it? I've been thinking about some stuff for a minute. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 yeah, like, it, it, it came like two weeks. The revelation came in like two weeks. My bro was like, bro, you know, the females, man, you like wine, they like wine, females, that's all they want. I what? I mean, I don't know about all. <laughs> we <were> like, <laughs> bro, bro, they all of them want it. I ain't gonna cap. All of them want it. I like the real wine. A, a, a glass of wine, some salmon, what, some, some candles. Bro, they, <laughs> make you just need the date night right there. Right there. You feel right. me? Like, like <laughs> real quick, just like that. 
But you know what I'm saying? Laid back, man, female, man, I'm telling you. Next thing you know, I took off with it. I'm like, all right, bet that's how we gonna do it. Man, so I wish Cosby would have done that. Yeah, dumb, dumb. Dumb. I mean, so now so now I'm so now I'm in two bars, one event space. I'm trying to move that I'm trying to come down there to Dallas so I can put some in Dallas. Uh that got something going for me with that. Hopefully we can make that happen soon. And then you know. You never know, Lima. We might put it in the package deal. Massage in the wine bottle. I know. mean, why not? <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you already know. I'll probably send you a case down there. Like, hey, do what you want to do with it. Get to your customers. Yeah. Let, let them enjoy themselves. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But why you rubbing them down? Hey, speaking of it, um, I was watching a few of your IGs earlier. You was like, <laughs> it was funny. You was like, uh, I just want to let y'all know a little secret here. My fingers be hurting when I be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I kept it all way funky, man. I had to keep it funky with the people, man. Because man, you act like, a lot of times you act like we ain't in pain. Because you ask nine times out of ten, you ask massage therapy, do you, are, are you tired? Do it hurt? We're all going to lie to you. We're going to say, no, I'm good. Yeah, I always wonder about that shit. <laughs> hey, I'm, like, I'm like, yeah, I'll be I want to be tissue. <laughs> Hey, that caught me off guard. Breaking. That caught me off guard. I'm like, did she really just say that shit? <laughs> I was like, listen, I'd be capping, man. I'm kidding. I'm going to say what nobody was going to say, man. That's man, all you got to do, it, though. At least you're being transparent. Everybody, yeah. Don't nobody want to do that for real, for real. Yeah. No, nah, people fuck with the real, though. When you're genuine, you ain't going nowhere. Like, the gimmicks and stuff always fall off. But when you're real and just stay true to the mission, you ain't going nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. Hey, hey, that's what hey, I'm saying. Hey, that, man. Oh, we like the social media thing, like so you know it's like I recently just started doing the the videos and stuff like that, and I feel like i I don't like social media because I feel like you become less genuine when you are, so a lot of times people are like, oh, you gotta find your truth and do it your way type thing, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and it just to me it didn't seem as organic to do it, and I just had to find a way like okay. Yeah. I be talking a whole bunch of shit like when I'm with my friends. Like I mean that, but no, like I will have. I say yeah, you do. <laughs> but it's hard for me to translate that when you're sitting at home by yourself trying to like, you know, what I mean, make a video. I'm like, this is like a real radio personality type shit. You know what I mean? Right, and you from New York. You, you can't hide that shit. You be trying to be all Texas nice and shit. Nah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I can pop that. I shit. can feel that. I can feel that New York vibe in in you too. Mm -hmm. So that's that's understandable. So, yeah, for sure. Hey, hey, right. check it out real quick, y'all. We got my girl Eva Young right here in the comments section. So look, she got an event no November 18th. I will be in the building uh, November 18th from 2 to 8, 5333 West Madison in Chicago, Illinois. Two word to be in the building with the wine. Everybody, all the other vendors will be there. So make sure y'all come check it out. Um, I just want to throw it in there because she's in the comments section. But Let me try to make it to November 18th. November 18th. It's uh, Saturday, Friday. It's one of them days. But we got events going on the whole weekend. So I'm going to let y'all know about that towards the end. But that is, man, I seen that you had the little um, magazine going on earlier today. Yeah, what man. Magazine? What was yeah, that? I the, uh... dropped a little article. Um, oh, okay, okay. That's what's trying... up. Yeah, I'll be trying to run from it. I don't be trying to have my face out there. That, that's my social media thing. I'll be like, I don't be want to be seen. I don't be trying to talk to people. They'll be like, tell me about Pop-Up Comfort. I'll be like, yo, the website. It's like hella yeah. information, <laughs> but yeah. nah. But they interviewed me like a couple of weeks ago about you know what I'm doing in the city. You know they hear about the moves I'm making. It's a um magazine called Canva, um Canva Dallas. Okay, maybe you know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm gonna say that's what it was, <laughs> but I'm, I'm kind of certain. I'm gonna so, know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! They interviewed me and they just like wanted to talk to me about risks of like starting a company and like pretty much just like wanted me to dive into it and I just let them know the sacrifices you gotta make, bro. Like nice. all the homies you gotta leave behind, which like I'm the homie. Like yo, I'm never leaving my friends behind. You got me fucked up. We going together. Wow. Yeah, it's called Canvas Rebel. So it's called Canvas Rebel, um, Dallas. So but over time it was just like you just see them fade away, like. You don't know what it is, but it's just, like, not the same no more. Like, okay. they don't want to hear about what you're doing. Like, they wanted to hear about it when it was like, yo, I just knocked down, like, this baddie or whatever the case may be. Everybody ears wide open for that story. But when it's yeah. like, yo, I just helped, like, 50 people today, then, like, 600 last month. Niggas like, yo, what y'all trying to go do? So I'm like, damn. 
So you just realize everybody ain't meant to go a long way, and that shit sucks. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like the people you're in the trenches with, like little kids. Like to see them not want to go with you is like kind of heartbreaking. So I talk about all that shit and like the family aspect, but I told it's worth it. Yeah. Like if you live in your life, ain't nobody else walking this with you. So you got to do what you want to do at the end of the day, especially if you're helping people. And then you meet cooler people along your journey, bro. Like I've met like some great yeah. people who tours, like businessmen. And it just like, you yeah. take that and run with it. Like you lost something, you lost a but part you of you, you feel, but you have to let that go. It's just like taming your ego. You don't want to kill it, but you got to like know how to move with it. Now and that's growth though at the end of the day. That's growth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you said, everybody can't come, but there's a reason. Everybody got a reason in a season. And like yeah. said, there's people going to come across your path for that time period, and it's going to be some new people that you come across your way. Like, again, you already know I just had a, a real big transition to my new business. So I've only been starting this business since January. You know what I'm saying? So this is definitely very fresh. But the circles that I'm making, the rooms that I'm in now, is something completely different than I was in just a couple months ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, the people I'm around, it's completely different. Everybody's a more elevated level, and it's just like, oh, wow, this this is out here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you feel like you lost a lot, but you also gained a lot, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and I say, like, you know, my second city is Chicago, you know, I'm, I'm from out west, but Dallas is where it's at, man. Too like, too yeah, if you want to if you wanna get into some business or, like, you're trying to start something and be yourself, like, on any level, you want to try to find a way to make some money. Like, and I'm in a nonprofit world, so you know, we ain't really making bank like that, but we're making a difference. Um, but if you really want to like make a living at, at a, a younger age, middle age person, you want to go for it, man, Dallas is where it's at. Like, it's yeah. a business. I would say that I do not regret this move at all. This was the best decision I've ever made in my life, you know, moving to Dallas, you know, mm -hmm. even though it wasn't really planned out very well, you know, and it's definitely a struggle to kind of find my, find my way, but. Honestly, like you said, if you really had that drive and you really want to do something with yourself, you can here. You could be anybody you want to be. Yeah. I feel like it's a, there's enough money here. There's enough people here so that you can, listen. You, nobody's your competition. Like you're your only competition right. here. Man. You can make a lane. Like you can yeah. literally make a like. It's just open. It's an open city. And like yeah. I'm a witness. I, and I was there five yeah. years. I was there five years. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna come back. I, I just gotta figure stuff out first, you know. <laughs> All right, you know, every time you're in the city, you're right at the crib. So I know I'll be right there. Too. No, but yeah, I want to shout out your mom for letting me stay when I was out there, cause you know. Yeah, shout out, shout out to my dudes, uh, D yeah, Gates. Shout out T Lady. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that's what so, y'all call it, T Lady, right? Or somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never well, understood well, that. What's, mom, a, what's a T and what's a lady? What's that? Hey, bro, don't don't give me the breaking it down. It's just like what it is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> said, I say Mom Duke, so I don't know. I'm from the north, so okay. Hey, <laughs> if hey, mom, hey, mom, hey, Mom Duke's actually in Chicago too. So yeah, yeah. yeah Cause y'all, y'all whack. Y'all know what y'all's mean. We we gonna go with some stuff. We we'll know what it means. Like we just go T Lady. Tall lady, tall lady, you know titty lady. You know what I'm saying? When you're a kid, you breastfeeding. <laughs> so the titty. La <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's not what it means. <laughs> hey, me too. But it sounds dope. I mean, hey. it makes sense. Give me that. Yeah, it do make but sense. But I hope that's not what it really means. <laughs> nah, but yeah, you see, I'm still a little, little. Yeah. Little. I got this one back free though. I went to try to hoop because you no know, Kobe. That's some shit Kobe would do. So I went and put up some buckets the other day. Felt hey. good. Hey, shout out, shout out to Kobe, though, man. Rest in peace, Kobe. Rest in peace, Kobe. Yeah, that was one day when I was at the hospital, random story. You know what I'm saying? I drove up there. They like, um, we think both your hands are broken. You drove up here? And I'm like, and then they're like, you're really calm. And I looked at that lady, and I was like, Kobe. <laughs> she was like, what? <laughs> yeah, hey, you so black. <laughs> that's something you would say. That's something you would say, though. She said, what, bro? Like, you remember when Kobe, like, got hurt? She like, bro, he had a million-dollar doctor waiting on him on the sideline. I was like, bro, you, you say Kobe for anything. <laughs> you, say, you drove here. <laughs> yeah, and I drove where they wrapped me up. I drove to the crib. Like, I'm a holler. Yeah, it was real. Yeah. <laughs> but you just got to do it. You got to have that mama mentality. You got to see it through. So that's why I say Kobe. That's, like, what, that's I mean, the mentality. Like, listen, ain't nobody here for me. I got to do it, do it myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's that's why I use these three words, which is my middle name. It's it's called Lee, Levitate, Expand, Evolve. That's that's my middle name, too. So mm -hmm. um, I use I use those three words every day. And so um, the crazy part is it's, it's my middle name. 
So I'm I I love to spread that because um it's different levels to it too. So mm -hmm. what's um, the three words again? Levitate, expand, evolve. Lee. What's your middle name? Your middle name is Levitate? Lee. <laughs> oh. Really? Really? <laughs> Young Lee. No, Lee. 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 <laughs> that was funny. I was wondering, I said, so what is his middle name? I'm confused. No, Lee. I wasn't the only one that was asking that question. You hear me? I mean, <laughs> probably, probably. Yeah, probably. probably. Cause I did say my middle name was Lee at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, hey, but it's the wine that was okay. Wine do that to you sometimes. Right. This is my right. second class, man. Right. Hey, so what y'all um let's get a little bit more personal. Um are y'all like family origin? Y'all got any um I I know you got the little one, man. Tell me how, how I feel to be a, a dad. Know, bro, that's the best thing of all time. Like He's super cool. Anything's like, possible. No, <laughs> it's crazy because he remind me of me a lot, and then like he do so many of my faces, especially when I'm like trying to be mad, and I'm like, "Yo, how I'm gonna be mad at myself right now?" I mean, obviously he look way better than me, but y'all see what I'm saying? You get the little expressions, but it, yeah, it, it's real cool. Like, fight for your kids. I had to fight for him. Um, you know, his mom was a little weird, but you know, sometimes people go through whatever they have to go through. <laughs> I mean, you know, she was she was going through a lot. You know, I can't say what she was going through as a new mom and like pregnancy. So, but to me, it was weird. To her, it was just probably like, shit. I just had a human come out of me, so I can't really judge that. But we went through where we went through, and you know, I, I fought, and that shit got expensive, like lawyers and shit. But yeah. I would yeah, say, I, yeah, I, I, trust me, I, I, trust me, I remember you, you was calling me about it. <laughs> but, yeah, for real. If you can fight for your kids. <clears throat> Like you, you matter too as a dude. I say that, and them kids are important. You got to be in their life. But yeah. I love it. I love being a dad. Like super, super love it. It's probably the best thing that ever happened to me. Well, for sure. So yeah, it's been cool for me. And I mean, I'm very family oriented. I don't like kick it with them often. I'm usually with my friends, trying to like make stuff happen. And you know, when you grow up, that's who become your family over time. Like you love yeah. your, your household and where it come from. And, you do everything to make sure they good forever. But, you know, we spend most of our time out with our friends. Mm -hmm. So that's just usually how life is. But, yeah, man, I, lo I love the family aspect of it, and I definitely love being a pops. Uh, a single dad, by the way, and I ain't really trying to date y'all, though. So but <laughs> when the mission done, I'm going to be looking looking to settle down and kick it. He's kick still it single, y'all. You see, you say a single dad. No, yeah. Sure. yeah. So, what about you, um, baby? For you. me, um... It's it's a little different because I'm Caribbean background, right? So like I do love my family, like, but we just Caribbeans is different. Like we don't really show love and affection like that. It's something that we gotta like work on. Um, but nah, like we I'm cool with everybody. Like I love my brothers and sisters. It's five of us, so okay. it's quite a big family. But I'm actually in Dallas myself. Nobody moved down here with me, so um, it's hard to be family oriented when that you ain't was, got no hey. family. <laughs> I feel, I feel that moving down there by your feel. I, that was strong. I, I did the same thing. That's strong. I like that in you. Yeah, yeah. So like I said, I love my family. I probably talk to them once a month for once every other month. Like I'm, I'm gonna keep it all the way funky with you. Like I, but I definitely do have a desire to be married, have kids. I feel like I'm gonna be a great mom. I look forward to handing out some whoopings and shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. For that That's hilarious. <laughs> No, yeah. but yeah, you're gonna have to because I'm at that stage right now with, with the little C where it's like he too and he just like want to do what he want to do. And I'm like, we're going over should we be a spanking parent or like a talking parent? So, right now, the, the decision I feel is like it's a, it's a healthy balance. I mean, it is, you, know, you gotta just, spank him, but you gotta tell him why. Like, I feel like when I got yeah. back in the day, I ain't get a why, I got a whooping. I was, I'm confused, I don't think I'm doing wrong, <laughs> you know, and that's where I'm at with it, but you know. <laughs> I lose the battle for now because you know I don't want no issues. So, like, yeah, but you know, he too. Maybe when he three. Maybe when he three. You do. Yeah. Come on, you give, pop, I'm pop, let, you have on a hand. You gotta work your way up. Just that's just a full. I'm gonna let, this, I'm let her let that go for a while. <laughs> see how that works. And then I'm like, all right, let me see what I can do over here. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, but I think he'll be good. He's super smart. You know, everybody like he gonna be a hooper, and I'm like, yo, this nigga probably be an archer or something. I ain't like I ain't gonna force my life on him. Like I ain't even want him to have my name. Um, his name Thaddeus, like mine or whatever, 
and I was against it or whatever. I wanted yeah. to name Anakin Skywalker Miller, but I lost. But I didn't want it to be Thaddeus. Because <clears throat> I feel like everyone should have the opportunity or the chance to, like, not think they got to live up to you. Live to somebody else. Yeah. Have their own path. But, I mean, I feel like it's cool. He probably named his kid that. So I guess that's how some people uh -huh. do their legacy. And it's a dope-ass name. It's going to be always It is a dope-ass name, though. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty chill. I gave you that. What y'all got coming up next, as far as event-wise? Man, what is today? So on Saturday, we got a um, 5K in Mansfield um, with NOLA 5K is a company. they based in Dallas, but they do a New Orleans-style run. And they pretty much get a proceeds to pop up comfort so we can continue our mission. So we go out there oh, and volunteer cool. with them. And I got to give a little speech, which I never like doing ever. And I'm not going to write anything down because whole – you gotta wing it. You gotta. It's better when you wing it, though. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I gotta do that on Saturday, and we got a lot of stuff coming up for the schools. I know we got a game day at <laughs> Siegelville, um, in like two weeks, and November just always crazy. You know, that's what we're gonna do: homeless stuff, um, going out feeding the homeless, probably around the thirteenth or so. We're gonna okay. do an OG. OG throwback pop-up comfort homeless day out where we're going to have a lot of volunteers. Like, pretty much how we first started. Right. We went out. Well, when I first started, I was just going out with, like, a couple dollars and passing it out. And that shit wasn't doing nothing. So I used the same, like, $100 and went to, like, Walmart and bought, like, bananas and waters. And that shit fed, like, over 50 people. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. From then, like, we just start evolving to different stuff. And I never took anything I wouldn't eat myself. Like, we took apples one time, but, like, they all really was throwing them on the ground. So when they told me why, they was like, it made sense. to Like, most people's teeth are too bad to, like, try to eat hard uh, shit. So we start oh, taking soft yeah. fruit out. Yeah. So that's always a reminder if you're taking stuff to homeless people. Try not to get them, like, hard shit. But I never fed them anything I don't eat myself. So never no cold cuts, no hot dogs or, like, soups. It was always, like, top-tier shit. So it's, like, whatever I put in me, like, that's what I'm going to try to share with them. It ain't going to be no, like, let me go to get the Walmart brand or let me go get, like, some McDonald's or something. We was like, yeah, hey, you, yeah, you fed me cheese pizza all the time. I ain't never got no meat with you, so. Hey, bro. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, but yo, those cheese pizza like, smack, man. Quit playing. Hey, I, you know, I was a vegetarian though, so when, when yeah. we were, bro, <laughs> you, you was in that, you was in that stage, but yeah, for sure. kept eating, so, so for like two years, I didn't eat meat at all. Yeah, like, he was killing me, dog. Like he was killing he me. He said he was killing me. <laughs> yeah, this thing come to the crib, try to eat. I'm like, bro, it's like plant-based shit in there <laughs> and then you trying to then you first of all you call me call me over there to get high, have a few drinks then next thing you know you want some of this cheese pizza what's on it? <laughs> <laughs> hey i still fuck with cheese pizza what you mean i mean it go it bang put some little peppers put the cheese yeah. on top Dip with some red. that's all you need nah, that's cool yeah. I'm with that's that. but i'm, I'm like, like man every, every single time though you know what i'm saying i'm I put chicken on mine. So I ain't gonna hold you. Sometimes hey, I know that's all I had in the refrigerator <laughs> that you could eat. I know you weren't about to go with no um chickpea sandwich, my guy. You wasn't about that. Like. <laughs> I couldn't get none of that, man. I couldn't get none of that. <laughs> you could not get jiggy with that one. Not at all. Man, I couldn't get none of that. Nah. Hey, hey, Liam, I got a question for you. So, how's the food from um Buffalo to Dallas? Our food is way better. Oh, we killing them. What you mean? Nah, Dallas. What? We that killing Buffalo. Trash. All y'all gotta take. Nah, place. man. What you mean? Buffalo All only got spaghetti. And y'all close good. at ten o'clock. Like ain't nobody hungry after ten. No more. Right, what right. Uh, bro, I'm hungry at one, two. You gotta go to the neighborhood. They open till six. Huh? You gotta go to the neighborhood. They open till six. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you need to have more diversity than that. That's where I slack at, man. No, y'all, y'all be too up All to five a.m. in Buffalo. I, I only have good spaghetti in Buffalo. Good, you what? Well, when I visited Buffalo, I only had good spaghetti one time. Because you probably even go to the right places. I don't know where you ate at. I mean, that's true. You probably went good. over. But thing is, but, but I will say Buffalo has good food because we have all the all the cultures there, right? So we have authentic Italians, we have authentic Koreans. We have, right. you know what I'm saying? Got, so we got Buffalo. 
It wasn't, it wasn't a lot of, <laughs> where I went to eat, it wasn't a lot of us over there. So they, it probably wasn't that kind of situation. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We are very, it is a very segregated city, however. So like I said, you, yeah, to to, you got to go to Italian neighborhood to get your good Italian. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's, okay. it's very segregated in that fashion. I remember one random, random story. It's going to tell you a lot about myself. So one day I was driving down the street. It was my friend's birthday party, right? And I live in a good neighborhood, right? Kind of like the Italian neighborhood. And my homegirl lives up the street from me. I get pulled over. The cop was like, why are you driving down this street? When he say, why are you driving down this street? Nigga, you know you're going to jail. Because <laughs> this is not a street for colored people. Basically, what he was trying to say. Like, nah, you could have went, went a whole nother way. I said, I know, but this is the quickest way to my house. I felt like I was in like Django with some shit. Like, why the hell I got to explain to, you, to this man why I'm going on the street? And I literally did go to jail that night. <laughs> I told my friend she was asleep in the past. I said, wake up, bitch. I'm about to go to jail. So I need you. I need witnesses and shit. <laughs> I need you to wake up. And a man really took me to jail. So that's how yeah. segregated Buffalo is. Like, they they don't play. Yeah, and people usually think it's just the South. And it's not. Like, it's, you know, I lived up in North Dakota forever. And yeah, they, uh, they still spot you out. That was different. So yeah. I always preach. I always tell people I appreciate Southern because it's like direct. Like At least we know what we're problem, dealing with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you got a problem in the South, there's like no tiptoeing around. And every time up north, it was like indirect bullshit. Yeah. I'm like, bro, yeah. just just say you don't fuck with me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It's so crazy because you know how big I am. I'm literally like a hundred pounds soaking wet. And these, these police officers, I never really had a good interaction with one. Like, to be yeah. honest, for somebody like my size looking like me, like, I look like I'm defenseless. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they come they come into the door, hand on their hand on their gun, cussing me out. Like, is that really? I'm already crying, sir. You ain't even got to do nothing, to be honest. I'm already crying. <laughs> and yeah. they still come mad extra. You be like, dude, chill. It make people feel tough. Yeah. Wait, so how y'all uh, feel about how they how they doing Kanye, man? You know what I'm saying? It's... <laughs> man, oh, that's such a touchy <laughs> subject. Because, like, I like Kanye, but I don't like the jaw. The jaw floor shit, I don't fuck with. You know what I'm saying? For sure. By far. Don't I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hear it all the way, so I'm still trying to hear it all the way first. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I heard what it. What did he I say exactly? He was just saying, like, he died from fitting all in his system and all that shit and not, like, the the chokehold and and when he was calling for his mom he wasn't calling for he was saying some wild shit he he just been Kanye for a minute but on the other side though he'll say he some talk like, like very, he just and shit <laughs> and on the other side though he he say some very forward thinking like shit that should be said like I can imagine what the richest black man in America get to see in in his everyday life you know what I'm saying like yeah. that shit got to be crazy like stressful. The stuff and you gotta, gotta witness and still gotta keep be. his blackness almost. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's tough. Like just, just I just say it like this. You know, I, I hang around with a lot of white people in Dallas in general, and just on like a a poor level, like compared to Kanye, is like when I go do shit, my family and them be like, "Where well, you at doing some white people shit?" And I be on a walk or like hiking or something. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Or like, yeah. don't let me go snowboarding. It's really over for the next two years. It's like. <laughs> So imagine Kanye in the rooms he in, like where ain't no black people in the rooms ever. It's just like him and other billionaires, unless Hove decide to come that day or some shit or open. <laughs> like, that's true. So I can't imagine what that nigga brain going through every day uh, under that kind of stress. But you also got to be very mindful of the shit you say and just can't be ridiculous. But I just think he's trying to run for president and he's trying to pander to the to the right. That's, like that's Trump. honestly, that's basically what it is. He, He's, he's, yeah, he's, I you know, Trump, like Trump he said if he ever runs for president, too. he'll do it as a Republican because you know they stupid. And, and no, he ran for Republicans is about their money. That's what yeah. it is. Republicans is about their money. It ain't even about ain't got nothing to do with anything else that they care about or what they uh, whatever agenda they have. They want to protect their oh, yeah, money. They, they about their money. Like, that's why they protect their money at all. I mean, all conservative values ain't bad. Cause yeah, I definitely yeah. agree with them when it comes to. I'm like, Republican. Gotta be I'm actually I'm actually Republican, Democrat, Black. <laughs> yeah, you got it. It's a balance. It's a yeah, balance. like I, I feel like you to say you only only on this side of the fence is crazy because yeah, it's good and bad and everything. You know what yeah, I'm saying? For sure. So I, I still ain't got no link front of Democrats. They they said they're gonna get everybody that out there. Nothing. We don't know enough about it. 
is like they say it's gonna get everybody EBT, huh? They say it's gonna get everybody EBT. The dem the the uh, Democrats they ain't getting everybody EBT. Yet. <laughs> listen, cause I'm I'm listen, cause I'm swapping mine. Hey, that'll be wild. Everybody will vote for them. They'll get a vote. Trump was but in that's office. how they do us though. Like a lot of times, that's what the Democrats do though. They'll they'll because I mean I vote Democrat. They'll they'll promise us like different kinds of shit like that. Like like stuff kind of to baby us a little bit. But and also, we never really like, no. look at what that what it actually means to society either. Because what it means yeah. for them to give us billions of dollars, you got they got to get from somewhere, right? So right. I think they they yeah. prey on the ignorance of of. You know what I mean? Of find out of how the financial institution actually really runs. You know what I'm saying? Because they're gonna take it back some sort of kind of way, or they gotta take it from somewhere, or it's it's lowering what our actual dollars really were. So now the U.S. dollar is worth less than Japan, and all these type right. of things, and less than Canada. Like it has all these things have an effect. You know what I'm saying? All we're looking at is like what happens to us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we gotta look at bigger picture, and I feel like that's a lot of times we don't do. I what my say is. Just do what Canada doing, because I feel like Canada got it right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel Canada like be... they not fucking, they don't never see Canada in the news, like ever. Not on CNN, not on nothing. Now, Canada, Canada weird, straight. though. I've probably been in Canada like 40 or 50 times when I lived in North Dakota, because like mm -hmm. whenever we want Asian food, we have to drive up to Canada and shit. I um, heard the whole Canada when, got a um, But I got kicked out of Canada when I drove, when I went to Buffalo, actually. I went to Canada, to Niagara Falls, and I drove over, got to do whatever, came back, and they was like, yo, you cannot come into Canada. And I'm like, why? And at the time, I had, like, a little situation with the law in America pending. Like, I had just got arrested for something. Oh, yeah, they, uh, they sticklers. I been, I'm banned from Canada for another, like, four years. I've been banned since, I don't know how long, 20? Yeah, so they told me, like, <laughs> they, they banned me for, like, 10 years. So they yeah. was like... Yo, you can't come to Canada for like 10 years. And I'm like, bro, I ain't even went to court in America yet. Which I ended up going to court in the situation wasn't even the situation. Yeah. Um, but when I moved to North Dakota, I went through the, a different border, like a little small border. So yeah. shit. I mean, I, I was with people who they were just like waving us through. So I was going to Canada all the time. Like, bitch, I'm banned, but I'm in Canada. I was too lit. Like, I'm nigga, I'm in your country, but I'm banned. <laughs> But yeah, they border Canada border stricter than like Mexico border. Yeah, for sure. I mean they yeah, I they want a shit. That's how I feel like I know it's it's a lot to get, and they like really sticklers. Yeah. But I feel like they sticklers for a reason because they don't yeah. want they don't want everybody in their country, and I understand it. You know what I'm saying? Like sure. they they tax a lot, but you get a lot when you live there. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Toronto is like a very clean New York City. It's still a, a very much like melting pot. It's still very yeah, dope. It's still a lot of culture. Like I love Canada. I've been to Montreal. Like they, they speak French. It's beautiful. The grass is green and shit. <laughs> yeah, I want to go to Vancouver. I, like Canada's dope. Canada's for sure dope. I mean, you know, in the whole country is legal because they smart. You know, we still out here tripping in Texas. Y'all was good in the shot. You know, I was loving them to spend, even though y'all taxing. Hey, we do why tax. Like we that? do tax. That's what they got yo, to say. I was like, yo. Hey, but is should I rather be taxed than like still going through the the system where they are trying to get you caught up with it? Yeah, um, we do tax. We do tax. But yeah, uh, Illinois got us beat. I think they're gonna try to do something here soon. But they said it was it was legal for. I remember I was talking to a cop and they were saying it was legal if it um was for medicinal purposes. So I think we have a medical card here now. Yeah, yeah, but I, they ain't giving it out like dramatically. No, not for so I think we're it. trying to push for it. It was man, if Texas ever become legal like. We're going to be the last thing. You know, we're trying to be, <laughs> Texas trying to be like they stand alone country. Oh, yeah, but we'll take over. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Like, if, if it became legal, the market will shift to Texas, like, for sure. Because, you know, that's how we do it. Like, I mean, yeah, it, it'll be wild. Hey, uh, Lima, quick question. Um, mm -hmm. So what's next for Touch? Um, What's next for Touch? I'm working on a lot of things. Uh, a lot of good things. So I'm actually, uh, something I've been trying to do for a lot, I don't know how long, since I became a massage therapist, I actually finally figured out how to accept insurance. So that's going to be a really big game changer for me and my business um, to that's say cool. I can accept insurance. And then I'm also going to be certified to actually accept VA insurance specifically. Um, so I'm actually working with the veterans a lot. So um, by, by next year, January, I'm going to have all that in play. Wow. I'm also going to be, like, working with um, – I have a mentorship with Chase Bank, 
So I'm actually working with getting my pitch together. So I can actually pitch, pitch corporations. Um, and teams and gyms and things like that. So I'm not really working on one-on-one -on -one clientele anymore. It's going to be straight contract based. Um, it's really what my my goal is and focus is going to be. Um, so I feel like those two things is going to really kind of elevate my business. And from there, it's just going to be growing my team. Yeah. Um, so will you? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. So will you try to go into the athletic field too? Uh, that is what I would love to do. That's my my goal. Um, but I know there's going to be a lot of uh, red tape and it may be a lot of restrictions with that. Okay. Um, so I'm being come in a minority certified and woman owned business, stuff like that. So I can possibly wiggle my way in there. Um, but, you know, and we're going to see what we can do. Pop up yeah, my man, Thad, he's going to try to slide me in these doors into these schools and yeah, I ain't going to talk me up. Because um, really and truly, especially like with the youth, I really feel like it's really big because a lot of these youth play at professional level, but they don't get the professional care. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, Kobe mm -hmm. hurt himself. There's somebody on the sideline waiting to help him. When a kid him, hurt himself, he, he there's nobody there. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. he don't he don't he not he don't know how to stretch right. He not he not getting massages. He not taking care of his body. He don't even know what he's supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? He in practice, he halfway stretching. You know what I'm saying? So they need to know how to take care of their body so they can make it to the pros. So right now they're not getting paid, but they're working like it. You know. Yeah, that's um, what I. Yeah, that's what I like about you. When I uh, was um, watching through your videos, you you actually go into depth about how you feel about. Uh, you need to stretch. You need to do all that before you even get a massage or even after you get a massage. Like mm -hmm. I, I like the way you actually um, do those kind of videos and and be more one on one with your with your client. And that's dope. I like that. I appreciate it. Now you just gave me some some push to keep doing it because I'll be listening. I you know I don't know if you noticed, but I'll be going like a week and I ain't posting. Like God damn it, Nemo, you gotta. You gotta make a post. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we I always just, like seeing y'all screen in general. I ain't gonna you don't even say nothing. Just point at a, a little post or something that you wrote. We like to see it. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I ain't gonna lie. You you be extra. I'll be like, she too funny. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. My my funniest video that I made, though, is when I talked about people's stinky feet. I just felt like that was funny. Yeah. I said, oh, I know a lot of people be thinking yeah. it. I watched yeah. it yeah. with the fungus, right? Yeah, that, that gotta be hard though. Like, bro, you going to get a massage? You ain't like, yeah, you gotta wear the flip flops up there that day and be washed up. Right, she ain't gonna touch them feet. Wear the flip flops. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hear <laughs> them things out before you see me, man. Hear them out. Yeah, man, she is Boy, not gonna touch I, them I feet. I smell some things. When I say I smell some things, oh my goodness, there was one lady I was working at massage in. So most of my bad smells. Was that I was at massage envy. This one lady, she smelled like death. I never know what death smelled like until yeah. I smoked this lady. It was like band aids, kitty litter, and the zoo mixed together, nigga. That shit, it was so bad. Like the fact that someone would go up there like that, like. And I think that's how she normally. I promise you, that's probably what her house smelled like. She so probably she got like things. She smelled like a funeral home. She, she smelled like band aids, kitty litter, <laughs> and the zoo. Death, nigga. That's all I could. That's death, right there. Word, sir, dog, and soup. That shit gross. <laughs> I, I couldn't use that room again for the rest of the day. I had to go to another room. I said, it still smelled like that. An hour later, it still smelled like her. That's I was like, crazy. that's crazy. <laughs> then I had it. one chick. She was so musty. I could taste it. I said, oh, Lord. This is bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad, and she was so nice, and she was young, and I didn't know how to tell her. I said, "How she not? It ain't no way she. I can taste the must in this room." And I walked in. I, I was like, "Hey, do you leave your customer reviews, or they just leave you reviews? <laughs> they just leave right. you reviews." Right. Oh, I'm about to say, <laughs> yeah, you gotta oh, leave yeah. I'm like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> she going?" <laughs> I, I was listening. No, you were trying to smell yourself. Like I had smoked it through my. Oh Lord, but she was the nicest person, man. I just I that, didn't know how to say it. Matters. Sometimes it's really hard to how do you say look, that look, to that's all that matters. She was so nice. Right, she was so nice. <laughs> she was. <laughs> right. She no, got I, I didn't have a heart to say nothing to her, man. I didn't have it. I mean It's crazy though, because you don't think about these kind of things like Right. Yeah. Somebody said somebody said band aid though. Like who smelled like a band aid? Like that was something different. <laughs> <laughs> that's not something you want to go through. That's nah, so you, don't, you don't want. You don't even want. But Matt, band aid, kitty litter, use kitty litter, and the zoo. Imagine all three of them scents mixed together. I don't even want to imagine that. I try to keep like my life clean, like 
even my imagination is pure. My palate, <laughs> my nose sense. Nah, that sounds bad though. Uh, right. Listen, oh man, and I made the toast fungus one because I have, I have a lot of men who feasting. It's mostly the men. I'm sorry, guys, to talk about you, but I don't and I'm wondering after your girlfriend don't tell you your feasting. Cause I promise you, my man came in the house and I feel like his hair smelled some kind of way. I'm telling them, like they yeah, hear stink. Go take I a shower. You, I seen you talking about athletic feet. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was that tickled me for real. Nah. And then somebody hey, in my hey. comments was like, "Feet supposed to smell like feet." I said, "No, it's not. If your feet what? smell like feet, that means your feet stink." Yeah. I said, "Your feet probably smell like feet." <laughs> they was the ones over there like, "I hope we don't do no contest right now." <laughs> Right, no smell off. <laughs> your feet supposed to smell like the rest of your body. If you, you know what I mean? Your feet exactly. supposed to smell like the fingers. This is supposed to be the same scent uniformity. <laughs> I mean, that's good information to pass along, though. Like, now people know, like, bro, just, like, go in the bathroom and wash your feet before you go get your massage. I mean, wash your body for sure, but your right. feet. No, but some people think it's our job to massage these people, like... I remember one of my clients, she's like, yeah, I got to hurry up and go home. She's telling one of her coworkers, I got to hurry up and go home and take a shower because my massage therapist is coming over, right? And her client was like, oh, no, that's her job. <laughs> and my client looked at her like, no, that's not her. Her job is not to work on stinky people. Her job is to work on people. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, no. Like, there's a difference. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand you come straight from work, but everybody don't stink when it comes straight from work. You know, you know when you had a rough day, you a little sour, and when you had a good day. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody knows. I don't so work what? in sanitation. I work in massage therapy. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> hey, not sanitation. So, quick, so a quick question for both of y'all, real quick. Um, what what would you guys say to your to your younger self? Like as as you right now, what would you say yeah. to the younger dad, the, the younger Lima? I would say, do what you want to do. Don't do what they what they tell you to do. I would say, go with what you want to do, man. I think that's the biggest thing. I feel like a lot of people will try to have too much control of how you live your life. Almost how dad was saying, like, you trying to look to somebody else's dreams and goals. And that's one of the main reasons why I moved to Dallas, because I was able to find who my I truly was. What, yeah. I, what my mama thought, what my sister thought, my cousins had their input. I would tell them after I did it, if I failed, I failed. If I succeeded, I succeeded. But it was my mistake to make. It was my choice to make. Yeah, yeah, and I, I feel like it. that is something that is priceless. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta come. You gotta come with something. You gotta come with something. No, he said that. That was good. Like, hey, but for real though, like, I don't think I would tell me anything. Like, I feel like I've had a real good life. Like, I've done some. Like, I've been to ten countries in my twenties. Like, I kind of always had a mind structure for it, because like I I was born in Mississippi and we was like poor, poor. So I moved to Dallas when I was, like, super young. So it was, like, I got to grow up in the city where it was, like, we wasn't struggling anymore. Like, of course, we didn't have it, like, the people around me in Lake Collins have it. But y'all y'all been in Lake Collins, like, it's, it's a nice area, you know what I'm saying? Wait, like, that's the uh, rich people area, right? Bro, it's definitely not, like, for sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, more, <laughs> I'm over there from the north people. side of the city, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Highland but, Park, um, you're right. Highland Park. Highland yeah, no, nah, Highland Park. But... That's what George Bush did, oh. right? <laughs> he got a house over there for sure. Okay. Yeah, his library over there too. But it was um it was just a good life, bro. It was a journey. Like I knew I was gonna wild out in my twenties, so I did. And I always told myself <laughs> in my thirties I'd get more serious about life and I did, you know what I'm saying? So You had I a plan. Kinda... You had a really plan yours out. Yeah. I, I my life did not go nowhere how I thought I was gonna go. And I feel like for me too, I would probably tell myself, yo, take it easy, you know what I'm saying? I, I definitely like you said I understand when you say you grew up poor. Like you understand, I was I probably was a child that they could not afford. Understand that, and all people were still like, "Oh, you just you're the youngest, you spoiled." No, I was the one they couldn't afford, <laughs> and they looked at me like, "Damn, how how we gonna get her some clothes?" <laughs> right. So that that was kind of like my struggle, and I my struggle was a struggle. You know what I'm saying? So, but I also feel like adversity builds character because you went through what you went through because you go through what you go exactly. through you understand what you're never gonna do again and what you want to be in the future yep. like for me i will never be hungry again so i don't give a damn when i go to a restaurant don't ask how much it's gonna cost don't tell me how much it's gonna cost i said i want this and i want extra that give it to me you know what i'm saying because i get i've been poor and i've been right. hungry and i'm not gonna be hungry again <laughs> and that, you know sometimes you gotta have that stance and you've been through some things you mm -hmm. understand like listen I don't care who here or not here 
I'm going to get my bread. If I got to have three jobs and not sleep, I'm going to do it to live the life that I want to live. You got to go in. And so, and that's pretty much what it was like. So I went, I really wouldn't go back and tell me nothing because I feel like I did it how I wanted to do, bro. Like, if it was a job that I wasn't fucking with, I did. Like, I ain't never, like, do stuff out of my character or Man. out of my life. <laughs> I got to that point, man. I got to that point. I just stopped. That's good, though, man. You always been that. Uh, I I had to get to here. I had to get to that point. I wasn't always. Yeah, exactly. Like I had to like, like that's that's commendable to say. You know, you. I had to tone it down. Like, yo, me with hair was wilding. Like I was, (laughs) I was the most arrogant. Nah, but the hair didn't make a difference. I just really had to grow up. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I moved to North Dakota, I moved out there by myself, and that was just a different environment altogether. So. Mm -hmm. I had to grow up so fast and like learn how to cook and all that shit. So I always knew I was just going to have this path that I tried to take. So it was just like a, always a growth thing for me. Like, all right, I know I want to do this. All right. I know I want to do this. And sometimes the time frame was off, but it still was in my mind. Like you got to get there, get there, get there. Like, but even when it was bad times, like I ain't on, on live in it. I just think about it as a moment. Like if something bad happened right now, I'm going to just dwell on it for this moment. And then by tomorrow, I'm good. Like, I'm like, all right, well, keep it pushing. Like, like people calling me with my hands and shit was broken. I'm making jokes because I'm like, bro, that shit happened. My my family calling crying because it was on the freeway. You know, y'all call it the E-way. But, you know, like the EMT was like, yo, the I'm be living through like a drunk driver going the wrong way on the freeway. Yeah. So I was just like, bro, I knew I wasn't about to die because I ain't get impaled. And they just like, okay. And I'm like. Yeah, bro, I'm good. So like, <laughs> now you, your mindset, if I say, is is definitely one of a kind. Honestly, like, yeah. you know, I mean, you it's dope. Got, yeah, that, was, that was the crazy part. That's how you thought about some shit, you know? Yeah, it's just like you just got to keep going. Like, yeah, because like, you called me like the day after, matter of fact, or the day of what? What was nigga, it? How your fingers after, still working, nigga? After. Hey, you know, you know, I'm tough. <laughs> hey, she called me tummy one time, cuz. <laughs> From Martin, yeah. <laughs> where you work at? Where you work at, huh? Hey, I almost died, bro. She like, say you got a job, and she just like, oh no, you be doing a lot, but I'll never see you at work. <laughs> I never ever, nigga. Nah, to this day, what... though, he he talk about working, and I'm like, but I ain't never seen you there. Though. <laughs> I mean, I, I, have, I have some jobs. I ain't never seen a picture of niggas that work pictures. I ain't never seen a picture with him. Like, hey, but I mean, people be work. extra with their life, though. People right. be real extra with their life. Like, <laughs> people be posting everything. Then they'll hit me up like, man, I know, I don't know anything about you. I'm like, but you don't know me. Why would you know something about me? Like, <laughs> you ain't gonna find it on my Facebook page. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm just telling you right now, man. I still to this day I ain't hey. seen this man at work. You had a, you saw the nigga with a headset, but did you see him working? That's, hey. it. That's it. That's it. Hey. Hey. That shit was a. Uh... What? Hey, I put hey, look, the I, make look I, ain't, I ain't never seen him take a call though. He had I'm the headset. Tell you, I'm trying to tell you this job. I put might the phone down exist. to make a sandwich though. <laughs> hey, he ain't never took a call. He he just had it on. <laughs> That's why it don't work out. See, I told you I live on my terms. I don't last them, <laughs> them jobs that long. I be like trying to start a ride in them things. Like, yo, what you get paid, bro? I get paid this. Like, we gotta go talk to these people about that. You need to make my money, my guy. Like, yeah, he so. said, he said, yeah, man. He said, yeah, man. I'm a, uh... look, look, look at this guy. Oh, he froze. So he tried to press the button. You froze, my G. We ain't here. Now you said. Oh no, he no. I was saying like every time I go over there, he had the headphones on, but he never took the call. I'm like, uh, he, hey, I had. He said, on, "Yeah, I'm on I the clock. Email only. On the clock. How you on the it's clock? Email just... only. I just had the headphones on, like just in case I made a call out. Bro, we was, bro, you was on the clock for two hours as I was done, and you didn't get my one call. <laughs> <laughs> that man was not working. I'm trying to say it again to the side. Hey, that was like, I was at Amazon those days. Actually, I was um. Amazon was giving me that bag, actually. That's how I started the company. On some real shit, though, my stocks from Amazon helped me start Pop-Up Comfort. Like, when I left the company, I, like, cashed out my 401k. I sold my stocks and just went hard. Like, for that whole year, I just was spending my Amazon money. But, yeah, bro, I was over the art department. And then I was doing concierge team and shit like that. You know, I had some art calls, like, 
But it was mostly. I didn't know they had an art department. You said this is some real fishy all over again, man. <laughs> no, for sure. Like that's why I was in North Dakota. Like they oh, have man. a specialty spot up there. So we was doing like concierge, any item on Amazon over five thousand dollars. See, that's why y'all niggas don't know about it because we ain't got bread like that. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. I ain't know they sell shit for five thousand dollars on Amazon. Oh no, nah, they got TVs for like ninety grand on there. Like Amazon got some crazy shit. Yeah, for sure. So that's we was dealing with stuff like, like Alibaba. That. It was only like twelve of us in the whole world, though. Like we was really dealing with Jeff Bezos' friends. You know what I'm saying? Oh wow! So that's the kind of shit I was doing when I was really concerned about working for people. But even then, that's when I realized I was living somebody else's dream. Like that's Jeff Bezos' dream, bro. I don't give a fuck about Amazon. Like I don't really even order from them. Niggas. <clears throat> order from them niggas. So like, why am I gonna continue like to like live other people's dreams out? Mm -hmm. So one day I was just at work and like, bro, what I want to do. Like what? What's that is dream? How can I sell a nigga my dream and have them living this hoe for me or with me or mm. where the goal is? But I don't want to continue like going into these businesses, living these other people's dreams and getting them this bread because they don't give a fuck about me at the end of the day. Like so, I got to go do it myself. For real, for real. That's a fact. My last job I had, I almost fought my manager, and I feel like that's when I realized yeah. corporate not for me. She tried yeah. to call me angry black woman and told me I need therapy. I think I definitely almost had my fist through her through her jaw. I said, it's time for me to Bro, go. Bro, my last job was in Texas. I ain't mm. been out there in five years. See what I'm saying? Like We gave it up, man. I can't do and, it. And I'm the nigga without a job out here, cuz. <laughs> 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 no, we had to listen. We had to, like you said, we had to live for ourselves. Like right now. I love helping people. When I, I'm massaging somebody and they get up and like, oh my God, I know I can feel like this. Oh my God, I've been paying for so long. Like, that's the reason. Like, that's, I always wanted a job where I felt like I was purposeful. Like, me calling people get on niggas' nerves, like, that's not a purposeful job. You know what I'm saying? Nah. Like, and I also want to be the subject matter expert in the room whenever that was. Like, if I'm in the room with one person, giving a massage, I know I'm the specialist. Like, so you want to listen to me what I got to sell, tell you. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to be the one to be able to assist you, you know? Um, and make and make your life uh, easier to live. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many people who are living in pain, and they just think it's normal. You know what I'm saying? Like, they never yeah. got a massage before. My back hurt. They just feel like it's normal. My back always hurt. It doesn't mm -hmm. even, it don't even matter to them no more, you know? And so I was gotta... those people, like, in pain every day. I was like, maybe I got fibromyalgia. I don't know what's wrong with me. I literally was in pain every single day until I became a massage therapist. I don't think there was a day I wasn't in pain. So when somebody comes to me, like, oh, I don't, nothing hurt. I normally get them on the table, like, oh man, yeah, this hurt, that hurt, that hurt, that hurt, that yeah. hurt, because you got used to living with the pain, and your mm -hmm. mind is not in pain anymore. Just you. Yeah. So I got a question uh, for uh, Lima. So um, I know you always giving everybody, you know. Um, I watched the video earlier, but I want to hear your perspective, like, here. You always mm -hmm. giving everybody they feel and, you know, massaging their points in view. What about you? How can, how do you cater to you when it's, when it's time to get you right? Um, now, I do, be, I do, I am better with my self-care now. Before, I wasn't, I was pretty, I was pretty shitty. I didn't eat, I didn't, nothing. Like, I was, I was all about my clients. Um, but now I eat, I eat better. I drink my water. I do get two massages a month. Um, and I, I also have one video out there and have like my self care corner is over here too right now. I done moved it. So I got a little foot massager, yeah, okay. Okay. Like okay. shoulder massager. I be soaking my hands. Like I really take care of myself these days because I understand I only got one me. And I don't I don't have my business in the place I need where I want it to be right now. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> until I get my team together, it's Team Lima and I gotta keep it going. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah. So do you so do you plan on branching off to the point where um you'll just um be placing people and then you just do what you gotta do or uh I probably you... always stay hands on cause honestly I love massage therapy. I love doing okay. what I do. Like it's not even work to me. Yeah. Like I I literally be like in a whole other zone, just feeling on bodies, like, okay, dude, I feel pain right here, I feel adhesions here. Like I'm not even like in the room, but I'm like in the room. That's, so that's what I like, like. That's what I like to hear. It's like an out of body experience to me when I'm massaging somebody. Like that's I truly, I like truly enjoy it. Yeah, um so I'm always gonna be hands on at some point. Probably really training is gonna be really big for me once I actually get staff, like just being hands on. I'm always learning. So like right now I'm taking a medical massage class. Um 
So like I said, I'm always learning. And when I learn something, I'm implementing. I have like my 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 go to clients. Hey yo, I learned something new today. The next time you come in, I'm about to I'm about to try it out on you. Let me know how it feels, and then I throw it out to the masses. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I always keep evolving. So even if you're like my client and been my client for the last seven years, you don't get the same massage you had seven years ago. Right. It's That's always elevating. It's always changing as I elevate and as I change. Um, so you basically so, kind of like know their bodies by mm -hmm. now. Yeah, but I, but I'm, I'm always getting new clientele. Yeah. So I, I just got to learn those new bodies. You know what I'm saying? And just yeah. and all it takes me about about ten minutes. I'm gonna figure it out. You know, I'm gonna have a conversation <laughs> with you in five minutes on the table. I already know what's going on. Yeah, because you the goat. You the goat. <laughs> that's, that's goat talk right there. I'm over here like yeah, that's goat talk right there. <laughs> That's that's amazing that you that you're doing something that you're able to get up and say you know mm -hmm. what I don't care what's going on like this make me happy this is my comfort zone. So. I love it like yo to honestly to find your passion is like there's no greater reward in life like when I came to Dallas I promise you I was lost like I was walking around talking to my best friend like she's like what's your passion I'm like bitch if I knew I'd be doing it goddamn like no stupid ass <laughs> question like that yeah. <laughs> And I, I'm so happy that I took that trip. Like, honestly, everything happens for a reason. God has his timing. And that's yes. all I can say. You know what I'm saying? Like, so anything I go through right now, I'm just literally in a spirit of gratefulness. Because God has my back. He probably like, this little poor girl, she out here just doing shit. Let Amen. me, <laughs> let me look out for her. You know what I'm saying? But he literally has my back. And he, again, spirit of gratefulness is all I can say right now. Like, yeah. for every client that I have, I'm like, oh, thank you, Father. You know? But you got to try it. Like, like she said, though, like so many people don't even know what their passion is, like at all. It's just you like, gotta, you literally, it's a leap of faith. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's how you find your passion. It's a leap of faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always just tell people, yo, just try some shit. Like, especially now with pop up comfort, my my home is coming to me with an idea. Like, man, I want to start this business. You know, I'm like, bro, start it, and I'll do an event for you. Like, mm -hmm. I come up with an event for you. Like, as soon as you start it, help you get your name out. Mm -hmm. So. I just feel like people just gotta try. Like everybody's so scared. Yeah, and they put a lot of people scared what other people gonna think. That's a, like, that's another thing. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you spoke on that. That uh, with helping folks. Um, that's another thing. You know, it's people get offended by collaborate, which I don't understand because why not? Like why not try to? You can't so do everything help, yourself. Yeah, like I I I just feel like people get um, too defensive when it comes to collaboration and too. Like we're about to because some things. sometimes people want to be the one in charge, and when you collaborate, yeah. and people don't yeah. like to share, and they get past kindergarten, people still don't like to right. share. They don't like to share the yeah, floor, right. yeah. and that, yeah, honestly, that'd be the biggest reason. We are on hindrance. Like, no, if you understand, like, listen, it ain't always all about you, and we yeah. all can make it together if you just wanna, if you just open up the door to it, and if you just step yeah. back and step down just a little bit, we all can have, we all mm -hmm. can have some shine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. and me, I'm just so like. I like, I mean, I don't be trying to be arrogant or nothing, but I just try to stay out the way sometimes because I know when I am, like, in full bullshit mode, like, I get a lot of attention. So I don't really try to do that. I try to let other people get on and pop pop off and get, get going because I'm like, bro, I'm just trying to, like, ease through the marathon part of, like, Nip say, like, I ain't trying to run the race and, like, be all bright all the time and burn out. I'm just trying to take this steady pace and, like, collab because it's gonna make my shit last longer because right. somebody else shit gonna last longer and when i'm falling off they can like oh yeah that or whatever helped me do this we can push, push me back up, up. Push me yeah, back yeah, up. So yeah. it's like, a why not collab like 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 we always trying to get something from chicago to dallas so we like bro we can connect the cities like it's gonna open up so much because there's so much shit y'all do out there that's dope and there's so much stuff that like we do here and like like i said dallas is an open market yeah. So there's a reason all the artists come here like six, seven times damn near a month because they know it's like motherfuckers with money just trying to be outside in the weather night. So yeah, you got it. And that's another more reason. Known. I'm like, man, and that's another reason because I'm like, there's a lot of people that drink in Dallas. Let me go ahead and send these bottles. Yeah, to it's a party <laughs> city, bro. Like, period. There's a lot money of here. Like, like you said, females like wine. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of brunches. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people who, a lot of chefs, chefs need some wine, they got to go promote or whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. everybody knows somebody that knows somebody. And that's just right. at the end of the day. It, mm -hmm. If people outside, bro, like, backyards, like, it's just an active-ass city, like, and it's damn near year-round. <laughs> like, when we hit that 30, it get a little cold, but, you know, me and Lima, we from up north now, you know, I'm from out west in the shop, but we used to that cold. 
I'm, I'm, I'm brand no new, shoes. my G. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hold you. It will see me when it's thirty. <laughs> uh, so I don't put on shoes till it like get under thirty. Then I got like, man, I gotta put on some socks and shit, bro. <laughs> but I have them flip flops on till it's like thirty. I'll be good. Hey, don't come in February then. <laughs> no, no, no. That I ain't gonna do that just because it's my birthday. Hey, but, I'd rather be no, we were talking about. I, I'm gonna be coming there. I think birthday February too, Dad. Yep. That for early February then, right? Late February. What your birthday? February twenty fifth. Oh, my twenty eighth. Why I know that? Bro, why don't we went on no date yet? <laughs> Shots. <laughs> nah, but yeah, it's the twenty fifth. You see that wrist? Hey, hey, I like that wrist in you think. It's left hand right now to the right with both. <laughs> <laughs> but um, hey, hey, look, y'all. So check it out. Um. I love chopping up with y'all, but I ain't got no my my energy going down right now. But Sunday night, if y'all available Sunday night eight o'clock, I want y'all to um call in to the radio station. Actually, to radio if y'all available. If not, I understand. Cool. But Sunday night at eight o'clock, let's do part two, and I I also have a um an artist um in the studio with me that day as well too. So if y'all hey, can't, hey, if you're a rapper, we got a battle on everything. Tell that nigga <laughs> write some battle raps. I'm not even bullshit. <laughs> I, I'm gonna log in just for that. <laughs> I've been dying to battle rap, bro. Like, let's go. Oh, I've been yeah, watching. That's cool. That's cool. But yeah, man, Sunday, Sunday um, at eight o'clock, I, I probably um, you know, send you guys the info to call in to the uh, actual. I'll be in the studio Sunday at eight o'clock. So what we'll do is we'll call in. Get you guys on, get my my regular guests on, and then we'll you know chop it up some more. Keep it going because I I love this conversation. Y'all dope as hell for this, so shout out to y'all. Um, um, before we go though, um, Lima and that is, uh, give y'all info, and then that way we can get up out of here on that note. And then, hey, hey y'all, look this this true to life for popular podcast FMP Radio. I'm excited for uh, what we got going on, what Lima got going on, what that is got going on, but you know. Timing is everything, so um, we're gonna cut it. We're gonna cut it right now. But go ahead, man. I'm, I'm gonna get y'all the flow to close us out. Go ahead, Dad. Cool. You can find me on um, popupcomfort.org. Um, it's the website on Instagram. It's just Pop Up Comfort. Um, same on Facebook. Pop Up Comfort. P O P U P C O M R F R R T. Pop Up Comfort. Um, if you want to follow me, it's just Thaddeus Miller. T H A D D E U S M I L L E R. You can follow me. I don't really be on there active posting my life because I don't need to know y'all niggas know where I work at because like that would be wild. But you can find me on all those little things and follow us. <laughs> we try we try we try and do a lot in the city. Um we actually trying to bring a branch up to the Chicago. Um, you know, we working on some stuff out there because I mean I love the city. I love being out that way. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta go up there, man. I gotta see, yeah. I gotta see what the hype is about. Man. Chicago, yeah, yeah. I'm actually gonna plan something for y'all. I'm, I'm gonna treat y'all right too, man. I'm gonna plan something for y'all to come. Uh, we gonna treat y'all right, for real. Yeah, for, for sure. So. Appreciate, appreciate, man. I'm, I'm gonna come if you don't have to do nothing for me. I still will come. Yeah, but we gonna come and just come and have a good time too. And yeah, I'll definitely, be there. I'll definitely be there as soon as well too. Dad, no, Dad, no, don't. Dad, no, I'm gonna be there soon. But I'm gonna make sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. But anyways, I'm Touch DTX on Facebook and Instagram, and that's also my website. So that's Touch Past Tense, T O U C H E D D T X. Um, again, that's my Instagram, my Facebook, and my website. I'm trying to make it trying to make it simple for you guys. If you want to follow me specifically, I'm Lima Lean um, on IG. That's L E M A underscore L E E M. I do be posting some shit. I only post myself when I feel like I'm cute and shit. That's all. That's it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, big things coming. This is just the beginning for me. Catch me year two, bro. It's, it's gonna, it's, I'm gonna be shining out here. <laughs> going up. That's hey, what's up. Give man. your information, bro. Oh yeah, man. So look again. It's true to lifer. They call me Will. It's true to lifer. Y'all know me. It's true to lifer. Um, popping up podcast. True word. Everything. You know what I'm saying? True wine. True clothes. Hell yeah. You, know, you, you can everything. find me. Every everything true, you feel me? So you can find us at truewinery.com, true true word clothing.com. 
popping up podcast um on IG, Facebook, True Wine, True Clothing, everything true, like like Lima said. So you can find me like that. And then also FMP Radio, you, you can find us there. So um, but this 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 show here will be on popping up podcast, the YouTube page, so you can subscribe and like and all that good stuff. This this show here will be on there um after tonight. So I will be posting the updates on when I upload it. Cause it will be off Facebook. It won't be on Facebook in like three days. So <laughs> uh, you'll be able to, you know, share it to your people and and, fo- and have them follow it. Let them get to know you for real, for real. So um, like I said, I'm excited for y'all to come through uh, to Chicago. Me coming back down there, it, it, it's a lot. Man. I'm excited for y'all in general. So um, for real, man. Y'all, y'all some dope people since I met y'all, and I, and I appreciate y'all a lot. Cause y'all didn't have to do this. Y'all didn't have to take y'all time out, and we spent about a good hour. So, um, I yeah, definitely, bro, call me like fifteen minutes before. Like, hit me like what thirty minutes before? Yeah, you try to go live. I'm like, right, I'm on right, the walk, right, 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 right. Because I didn't have to walk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what? I, I actually was excited because I, I seen that you were on that um, the end of the uh, article earlier, and I'm like, man, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, you know what? I'm gonna bring that is on too. Why not? You yeah. know what I'm saying? So. Lima, I know I didn't tell you, but I appreciate you for letting Dad come on. <laughs> but yeah, man, it was. It I was feel like he, I thought because he was connected, like he the reason why I know you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that was one of the reasons. But I, I, uh, once I seen the article, I'm like, you know what? I got to bring my boy on. And then once, hey, he, hey, so then got to make a magazine to get on the <laughs> podcast, cause <laughs> <laughs> no, man, no, I, no, I just want to show people, like, you know what I'm saying? What you about, man? And, you the reason I got this connect right here to Lima, so why not? Yeah, for sure. So, no, I appreciate uh, it. For real though, y'all, y'all good people, man. Y'all, y'all a good vibe too. So again, God bless y'all. God bless y'all establishment. God bless y'all business. And and we finna levitate. We finna expand. We finna evolve. That's that legal yeah. action. You Anybody in Chicago trying to get in Dallas, do some business, like tap in. We're yes, always sir. trying to connect the city. So that's one of our missions. See how we're gonna be able to connect the cities. Mm-hmm. And, and we're going to bring them in the studio, y'all. So, yeah, shout out to my girl, Lima. Shout out to Thad. Wait, to battle? Oh, no. Out, <laughs> I'm not rapping. Out, I'm bro. not rapping. <laughs> I just heard bring me in the studio, girl. That's Man, all look, I heard. you come to the studio, you can do what you want on the mic. Man. I'm with it. <laughs> For real, you can do what you want. Cause we, I, I ain't going to lie. We, got, we actually got this um, point where you, you can actually record a record in that motherfucker. So. <laughs> I'm trying to battle with that. I ain't trying to make it. <laughs> But no, man. So shout out to y'all again, man. Um, again, it's popping up podcast. True to Lifer, Lima, that pop uh, pop up comfort. We got touch. We got everybody. So we'll see y'all later. And uh, I'm gonna hit y'all up when I get off this and let y'all know right. up, update everything. But yes, yeah, yes. we up out of here. Y'all have a good night. Y'all be blessed and stay right, tuned. Peace out. Bye bye. <laughs>